Uh, hey guys, I'm going to do here a Golf Clash video for Tour 11. We are going to basically look at some shots here. Um, I have not been on this count since the tournament end. And um, this is kind of my new current bag setup. Um, nothing too impressive here. I really want one more Thor card. I've been sitting on nine for probably a week now. So that's very frustrating because I really could use that boost uh, in Tor 11 for damn. <laughs> Everybody else is playing with Sniper 10s and the occasional nine. Um, let's see what I have in terms of balls. Okay, so I'm sitting on a pretty decent amount, almost 200 Kingsmakers now after winning the uh, pro division. So I could really use those balls because I really can't, I really can't leave these balls because I don't have curl. So it's kind of forcing my hand. Um, same for you guys. I wouldn't ima I would not recommend trying to do anything different than Kingsmaker. Maybe a katana, but that side spin is pretty much crucial. And then of course we'll get a hole like this, and it's just this is just the death. Um, I, I would need to get the wind here which as you can see, I'm not uh, trying to figure out how much, how to play this correctly. I'm gonna try, I really don't know what to do here. I'm gonna just try to get a little creative with my play. I'm gonna try to play a shank, do it right off the bullseye edge. Just to try to get a little bit extra curl. Try to keep it out of the bunker. So I'm trying to get it over and it just got over. Slow down, slow down. Just good enough. Um, avoiding that rough basically guarantees me the eagle. Had it gone just a little bit farther, but I also wanted to make sure that it was over the bunker. And you see, this is what you're up against in this tour. Um, Apocalypse 5s, Apocalypse 6, Apocalypse 4. Pretty much universal. Uh, you'll see an occasional extra mile 8. But not a lot else. So you really have to play very strategically. And you see this guy, you know, he, he sees where I am and he's going to try to play accordingly. He's going to, you know, throw on the pumpkin ball, which is basically a Kingsmaker. It's the same exact stats because it really forces your hand when you get wins like this. Now let's see if he can avoid this bunker. It's looking like he did. Let's see. Yep, he's good. So two eagles here more than likely. And I'm going to have to beat this guy on the tiebreaker. So again, um, I'm pretty close here. I'm not going to uh, leave the hole. It looks like I did leave the hole on the back edge. That's why I'm just going to kind of short hit this a little. Ah, I shouldn't have done that. That was stupid. Ah. <sighs> I don't know why I short hit that. I was like, oh, well, if I, I should have just basically went, did my adjustment the way that I was supposed to and not got cute with it. I was just basically rushing the shot because I didn't feel like adjusting it. And probably not the smartest thing to do in Tour 11, but uh, for the most part, like when I'm on my main account, I'll just, you know, mess around like that kind of rush through things and so I kind of did that here and this isn't really the this isn't really the account to be playing around like that I should just take the stroke but what I did do is I, I was overplaying it so I was trying to short hit it a tiny just to kind of even it out and then I ended up taking off too much and it didn't get to the damn hole <laughs> so kind of a stupid mistake um, disappointing to say the least that uh, I did something that stupid but uh, what are you gonna do
I should have just zoomed in farther, put it on the very back edge of the cup, and just hit it normal. Because you don't need to leave the cup when you're that close. So let's see if we can keep going here. Kind of fix that mistake. It's kind of annoying to do a video and then not to even get to the tiebreaker holes. It's like, what's the purpose of the video? So I probably shouldn't be messing around like that. So here you're seeing the extra mile eight. This is kind of like the rare case that I was telling you where the, these are the guys that I like to face off against because I actually feel statistically I have a shot. He, he has worse accuracy than me still, even than Thor too. So it kind of levels the playing field, which is nice, but he has so much more in terms of distance. His distance is a lot better than mine. His, uh, his curls just, it, it's not like a pot curl. So that's, that's why I like playing guys like this. It's because it's my only real out other than maybe like a Thor 4 that I'll see occasionally. Some guy will have a Thor 4 instead of an Apoc 4. So that's kind of the only other alternate approach that it's kind of refreshing to see because it doesn't happen very often. So you see what I'm doing here? Um, I'm not getting super aggressive with my aim, um, and I'm trying to keep it shorter just to make sure that uh, I don't hit the rough. So you see me, I probably did about a four ring adjustment there. Um, normally I would spin it and, uh, you know, go kind of straight up and down, but when, when you're on max club, and you're gonna hit it a little bit extra, you just kinda gotta estimate. So what I'll do is, uh, is I'll just add a couple rings. I, I'll just kinda visualize, cause I know it would normally be like a, maybe a six ring adjustment for me. Um, but the way that I'm kinda thinking of it is it's is it would be four to the side and then two up. And that, and that's just you know an ex, an estimate. So I, I just went like four to the side there because I couldn't go up. And you see what I have? I have uh, my sniper here, and I'm kind of I'm gonna be more towards Max Club here. I like playing this off uh, with some backspin. So I'm going to be pretty close to the Max Club, and when you're when you're at Max Club here, in fact, I'm at, I'm actually going to tilt it a, a, a tiny bit too, because um, it's going to make my adjustment just a smidge easier. Um, and I am going to need to go, you know, about 11 rings here. So I'm going to kind of rush to kind of get it, and it's you see it's right at Max now. Perfect ball. And it doesn't look like I quite went enough. It looks like one more ring. I was one ring shy. Um, I was trying to add just a touch of curl. Um, I realized once I got to max there that it was going to play more like 0.9. But, you know, I just didn't have enough time to really factor in how much extra I needed to go. And I was at least a ring short. I usually, typically, when I go max like that and add no power, I'll usually do like two extra rings. So with the curl that I was doing, it was kind of maybe even, maybe I was going just a little bit past, like a leg. So, so Sniper, it, it has 100 accuracy on 11 and a half wind, it should be 11 and a half rings. So I ended up probably going 11 rings total and then adding a little bit of curl when I probably needed about 13 rings with that same curl. So, just something to keep in mind. And I have this Goliath on just for basically this hole and a few others. Uh, the way I like to do this 
is I'm going to try to do more like this. I like using here as my landing zone and just kind of utilizing this hill a little bit. Um, and my accuracy on this club is super terrible. It is really bad. So I always have to be focused on perfect ball. I probably went, uh, it looks like I didn't quite go enough. Now it does use this slope, but I'm still not sure that I use quite enough side spin. I, I went probably three and a half rings there um, because my accuracy is so bad that it's about three per ring on that shot. Now I, I underplayed it just a touch there, just a touch. Um, and of course this guy also has Goliath, so it's gonna, and he got a much easier wind than I did. So I would imagine to lose this, especially to a Goliath 7. Um, I'm not sure if he got the accuracy boost yet, so again, I, I'm basically kind of hoping here that he doesn't hit perfect ball. And I just underplayed that wind ever so slightly. It was probably one ring, uh, not quite one ring. It was probably like, you know, two yard. A two yard underplay there is what made me miss by that much. Um, and this guy hit perfect ball. You know, that's kind of, and that's kind of the breaks. He didn't, he didn't have quite as hard of a win as me. So I basically, you know, I, it's a loss. Yeah. So it sucks that, you know, I, I hate when this game does this. They give one guy just a, just an easy win to play, and then the other guy gets, you know, this complete crosswind that you have to be very particular on. And so this tour turns out to be much more of a grind. It, it'll be times where, um, you know, I basically take advantage of the mistakes that guys will make, but for some reason, I'll go through a phase where I have to do everything first. And then it just makes it super hard because when you have worse clubs than guys, and then they get to use your shot as a guide on top of that, it just is extremely hard. Um, so I really need the other guys to be going first. Um, to really have you know, the best chance, um, especially when they're using my clubs, basically. They can just basically take my shot and then just do one minor adjustment to just keep it that much closer. So, but uh, this is where I usually get my coins back is, you know, take advantage of other guys' mistakes. So you're seeing what we're getting here this is the one time that I might go down a ball um, I got plenty of wind here to take advantage of this um, I'm gonna try to take off just a touch just for accuracy sake so I'll try to do this like this and I didn't I almost didn't spin that enough away from that rough. It was very close. What I usually try to do, I'm not sure if I did it, but I usually use some right spin there to kind of keep it away from that rough. I almost ended up hitting it there. But this is kind of like what's nice about uh, this tour is there'll be so many games where one guy will make a mistake and if you can just avoid the mistake, and you just, you know, pick up a quick game here. And I have to take full advantage of that because I'm using, um, you know, clubs that are worse than every opponent, every time. Like, there's no exception. I've never played a guy who has had a bag as bad as mine. Not, not even one hole. So, it makes things definitely tougher. Uh, let's see what we got. I, the, the safest way to play this is probably going to be a sni uh, sniper here. Um, so I'll probably try to take advantage of that and then just short hit this just a touch. Now it should be about a 10 ring adjustment.
So let's kind of just play safe here. Try to avoid the big mistake and just see what happens. Now this guy can still make this shot here, but I was just trying to, you know, play the percentages and especially with this huge wind, it's going to be hot, tough for this guy to uh, execute this one. So it is still makeable, um, but he's going to have, you know, a mega adjustment. And you see he's right at Max Club, so he's probably lining this up not a very smart way. Um, you you kind of want to avoid shots where that's going to happen. And you see now he's completely going away from that. He's going to add power to a, uh, to a sniper. Looks like he got it off. Not quite on the green. Not a big deal. That would be an easy pitch, but uh, chances are he's not going to get to pitch it. Even though I'm right back here on the back, um, I left it in a spot where the putt is not hard because it's so downhill that it just kind of, it's, it's a short putt. It looks long, but since it's downhill, it's really only like a 10-footer, so the accuracy is... Enhanced quite, uh, so I kind of feel bad for the guy, his tee shot, um, but that's kind of, uh, kind of what I'm looking for in terms of uh, when I'm ranking opponents, like matching up with guys. I actually want to play guys like that. Um, now, I still don't, uh, you know, I never re-up um, pretty consistently. I basically just back out and always recycle opponents. Um, if somebody wants to play again, like sometimes I'll match them, but it'll be on uh, like the way that I get rematched with somebody is basically by them searching for a game at the same time, and then I'll get them. But uh, guys like that, th th those are the type of guys that I want to play because they're playing mile. They, they have potential to make those mistakes. Like you saw a drive. His, he has th the accuracy, you know, the low accuracy driver. So that really does me some favors. And same with Goliath. Guys that have Goliath, you know, that can be a good thing for me because... Uh, I'm not sure what happened. I, I I feel like that guy just got glitched. Or released with his finger on accident. Pulled it off the screen or something. Um, but I'm definitely going to need to take advantage of that because, I mean, I'd have no chance on this hole. No chance. So here's a 12.4 downwind. Looks like it looks like I'm good in terms of not So I'm hoping to still hit the fairway here, which I did. I was assuming that I had enough but the problem is is getting it down there, I'm not going to be able to get it down there far enough to get on two here. So that's why you're seeing me put the Kingsmaker on. Even though with a Titan I could drive it farther, I'm worried about the tiebreaker because I'm assuming I'm not going to get on in two no matter what, and we're probably going to a tiebreaker. So that's why you're seeing me drive it with Kingsmaker here, you know, even though it's shortening my drive. So you see this guy, he, he should be okay. Um, let's see what he does here. Looks like he threaded it right up through there. That'll be easy on from there, so. But I put the Kingsmaker on because I knew we were gonna probably go tiebreaker. It's gonna be hard to beat this guy. Um, oh wow, look at that wind. That's crazy. With that wind, with that much wind, I should have had Titan on. This is crazy. 
So, kind of unfortunate for me, but it is what it is. I'm less likely to be able to beat this guy if I use a Titan in the tiebreaker. So, but had I used tiebreaker, I potentially could have avoided this uh, even going to the tiebreaker. But you can't bank on that wind being perfect like that. Like that was that was a fluke. So getting to the green in two, like I can't bank on that when I have a Thor two and uh, a sniper eight. Like that's one of the shorter. I have the shortest sniper out of basically everybody in this tour. I think it's only like 166 yards or 65 yards. And everybody else is playing, you know, 172 or something. They had me by at least six yards. I know that, plus some top spin. So, so when you miss long like that, it's it's not a problem. Um, it's a relatively easy dunk. Now you do have to play the wind down there, um, but it's not very much. So let's see here um, if you can get perfect ball on this pitch. You know it can be very makeable. So I'm going to try. There's a couple ways I like to do this. Uh, the biggest way is I like to use this fringe here and just kind of bump it up. So you're going to see me do this. Um, and on this, I, I'm more prone to play it sideways, the wind sideways, like, like I'm not rotating because I want to see how straight I am in terms of the cup. So as you see, I'm just kind of putting it on the right edge of the cup. perfect ball and I'm hoping that I got this one and for some reason even though and that's why I do this because I didn't leave the cup and yet the ball leaves the cup so how much sense does that make and that's one of the you know those glitchy things that just shouldn't really happen and then did I didn't even leave the hole on my aim hit perfect ball and then it leaves the hole by a cup not even against the wind and you saw me push it straight over and it just shouldn't have it shouldn't have went like that so it's crazy that that happened it would have been nice to you know get this game back especially after throwing away that like who knows if i would have uh got that first game against that guy because we didn't even get to the tiebreaker so you've only seen me play one tiebreaker so far in this entire video and you know, it's the difference, not getting to that tiebreaker could have been the difference between going one and two and the difference between going two and one. So it's either being 33% or 66%. So it just sucks to, you know, throw away games before the tiebreaker and it sucks to, to kind of get robbed like that. And that's typically the reason that I play it off that fringe and do that because usually those fringe are more kind you don't you don't see that happen and of course I get to go first again on this why not so when I just got this sniper eight and this is the first club where this is actually manageable So the way that I like to do it is about two rings, more or less, of, of uh, spin back here. And then you have to play it a little bit short. Um, so you're going to see me... It looks like it's a little bit of an underplay. I'm going to try to shank it one left. And of course I didn't. So I'm going to miss the island. so crazy I didn't have enough time and I rotated the screen the wrong way so keep that in mind and of course they give this guy this easy wind let's just end this game now so I don't even have to watch it it's just a waste of time I tried to shank that left and hit perfect ball now do not ask me how that happened because I know I've released late there so it's just annoying to go one now it's one and three because, and I'm going first every tiebreaker 
you just get in these grooves where this happens. And, you know, I should have been super close. Had I got the shank off there, I would have been two yards, within two yards, and at least had a chance to beat this guy. And just like that, and you know, I, I noticed my device is starting to lag a little bit on my uh, tie breakers. There, there's only so long I can play on this phone before you start to see this happen anymore. And you know, right now I'm at the half hour part. I'm at half an hour in this video and I can already sense that my screen is just, so my play, first off, my phone's playing super hot right now. And I'm seeing like, so, and you see this guy, he just quits out. It's so ridiculous. Like it sucks so bad not to be able to get matches in Tor 11. Like it's the worst. I hate playing guys in this. And it's like, if you see my bag, I am the least intimidating guy on this tour. I don't care like how much skill or whatever you think I might have. I am the perfect person you want to match up with. No matter how good I am, it doesn't matter. You want to match me. There's basically nobody on here playing this tour like any worse. So, and you know, I can grind through. I still, earlier, like on last Sunday or last Saturday, I was able to get on, you know, a, a five-game win streak with this account. But it's, it's really hard on this tour to get a five-game win streak because you need all the variables to go right. And all of a sudden, I can't get a match. It's kind of annoying. I'm going to close all this down. Let's see if I can't get a couple more holes. And then kind of end this video. We'll see. We'll see how the next one goes. If I still have that kind of sluggish thing where my device is, you know, starting to play like this where it's not smooth with the, especially on the tiebreakers. Now, I don't know why it gave me perfect ball there. I know I shanked that thing. I released late. And it gave me perfect ball for whatever reason. So I should have been good there. But uh, one of the things I do want to note there is you are on the, the very short end of the sniper on that island par three for that hole. So you want to underplay that win. You know how the win was like a nine and I did, you would think that it's a nine adjustment. Well, no, you, you want to play it more like seven because it plays more like 1.3 per ring on the short end. And I can't believe this. Like, are, are we really going to just keep playing this and, and not get a game? Like, this is ridiculous that you're seeing guys quit. Like, seriously, I want to literally post this video online and just call these guys out for quitting. Because it's just absurd. Why would you quit? As soon as you see my clubs, you're going to be thankful that you're playing me and not somebody else. <clears throat> Shit, I can't even, I cannot even get this fairway. I can't even reach the fairway on this hole. That's how absurd it is for guys to be quitting out here. So there's a couple ways that I've gotten there and all the ways suck. I have to go basically perfect ball here. Um, I either have to aim here and kind of left spin it which is probably what I'm going to do. But, I mean, this shot is awful. This shot is awful. I mean, it's basically, you know, just hit it in the rough intentionally. And just hope to get to the green in two. I mean, that's how ridiculous this tour is. And, you know, I'm basically just giddied my eagle. And I'm playing a POC 5. So it's like... They can always get to this fairway. I have to hit the perfect shot, but foremost, since I have a Sahara 3, I need to avoid that bunker. So what you're seeing is the shot that I played. Now, I could have put on a turkey ball to have the wind resistance, but then I'm not going to have the tiebreaker. So you see, I'll, I'll play it like this and then just hope to 
See, because that's the thing is, you see, I need that side spin. This guy, he might not need it. So, you know, it's better to play for him, you know, Kingsmaker or uh, Turkey Ball, whatever. But you see, I can just play it like this. And, you know, worst case scenario, I could play it over here, skip it over the bunker. Um, this way, I'm probably going to go more like this because this shot is very, very safe. Very, very safe. This is holdable. If I, uh, so I'll play this roughly about five rings, and you're seeing I'm kind of going over and then straight down. And then, you know, I'll just curl it just a little bit on top, just add just a touch of power, not very much. Ah, I was late on my uh, delivery. Playing it very, very cautiously. You see, I was trying to get it in there deep, at least past the hole, so it had the chance to use the slope and come back. But as you can see, I, I didn't quite play enough. Towards Max Club there, it plays probably about six-ish rings total if I don't add power. So I'm kind of trying to, I was trying to estimate like about what six rings would be, more or less. But uh, trying to keep it long because long is better than short on that. And you know, I have to avoid this guy holding out on me here. Because this is a relatively easy holdout too. So fortunate, you know, he hit he hit a great ball, and that helped me because it made it come up short because he got too much of that slope. You see, I'll just use the slope here, get to the tiebreaker, try to beat this guy. So that's kind of was best case scenario, you know, couldn't even, couldn't even get to the fairway. If I hit that absolutely perfect, um, I can make that fairway. I've, I've, I've rolled it on with a very similar wind on that hole. But it's so stupid that we're even talking about this. Like, we're talking about me barely trying to get it to the fairway with full top spin, with full side spin. And I have to execute it just right to where you saw how I was aiming way out to the right. Otherwise, I'm in the bunker. So I'm just playing the shot that'll keep it out of the bunker, which is crazy. So with this, we're probably going to go at it with driver. Don't have much of a choice. Um, you see I'm already right on the very short of Thor's. So let's say this is a five ring adjustment for example um it's probably more like six um but i'm gonna go since i'm gonna go past the hole i'm gonna probably go four and then add side spin which is full curl so i did a instead of a six ring adjustment i did a four um and it's still too much still too much so the reason that i was taken off and under adjustment was to try to keep it short and you see I didn't quite take off enough I wasn't sure I haven't played this hole too much and when I do I don't usually get it straight in the face so I don't really know what I'm dealing with and you see it's probably going to be a loss um, but it's not a it, it, now it's so ridiculous that they give this guy straight sidewind after I just had it basically straight in the face so normally you might see me, you know, I might put on Sniper. Well, if, if I was this guy and had this sidewind, I could have, I could have done this shot. So it's really frustrating to see, you know, I can basically just forfeit. I mean, there's no way on that wind with a turkey ball, this guy is going to be outside my ball. There's just absolutely no way. He's going to have to go out. He would have to shank this outside the bullseye to mess this shot up. So, very frustrating. Very frustrating. Now, he did go long here. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Look at this. Look at this. This is crazy. This is crazy. What was he thinking getting on that north end of that club? That's crazy. That is crazy. 
So, I don't know what happened there, um, but that's the reason that I didn't forfeit because I knew that there was, you know, there was still a marginal chance on that shot. Whereas the other one, you did see me forfeit. Um, I kind of just didn't want to mash that guy again. He had uh, some good, really good clubs. So forfeiting out kind of just promotes them not giving me that same opponent. So that's why you saw me forfeit. Whereas there, I didn't mind matching that guy. I mean, he he did have a POC 5, but the way that he played the approach shot on the second shot, like, wasn't intimidating. So you saw me stay in the match. I had assumed that there's no way he was going to send a deep there. And then he still did. So I, I just got a little lucky there. Like, if it was me, I wouldn't even mess with, you know, if somebody plays that first shot that you saw me play, um, your first thought is to just leave it on the like, front of the green. Don't don't mess with the slope. Just use backspin, all that. Um, don't do anything like that. Nothing fancy. That kind of has to be your train of thought there. And then for this one, um, I have a little bit left pointing wind. Uh, you have to kind of go full here. So I got to press a little bit. And you see I was able to get my perfect ball. It should be, it should be in the fairway, I think. So what's nice about that is it doesn't go uh, too far to... Like, with as short as my clubs are, I couldn't go to that left rough that you see up there. Like, I just, I just couldn't hit it far enough to get there. So it was almost like that wind is kind of like a safety net to where as long as I don't go in that right rough, which it looked like I was actually pretty close. But uh, I was able to keep it out of that right rough. I couldn't have got to the left rough. That left... So I was... And as you can see, this guy can. So, you know, he has two things to think about. He has to avoid the right and the left rough. Whereas on my shot, straight into the wind like that, I just have to avoid the right rough. And uh, this shot with Goliath, really awful. I don't, I, I don't have Goliath on for this hole. I have Goliath on because, and you know, this Goliath, it's probably going to play, you know, three and a half. I'm, I'm on the very short. It's probably like three and a half per ring, somewhere in there. But you'll see that I'll just overplay it just to be on the safe side. Because especially since I'm going to curl it to try to get it over towards the hole. Ah, I still shanked it one left. Didn't want that because now it's going to be way left. It's not even going to be close. So... That's the problem with Goliath. Um, it, it basically reduces my chance of holding anything out using this club. I strongly recommend, if there's not a, a reason that you need Goliath, don't play with it. But there is, for me. You saw the very first tiebreaker that we got here? Um, if I go perfect ball on that, a lot of times I can win that hole because I can outplay the guy, um, except for the certain occasions where I'm going first and, you know, the other guy has Goliath and you can just shot copy. Um, a lot of times I can, you know, beat him. I, I love seeing when they don't have Goliath, which, you know, about half the guys are playing with Goliath, half of them aren't. So the ones that aren't, I already have a shot that they're not going to be hitting because... They can't really shot cop because they don't have the yards to get there to to hit that tiebreaker shot that you saw me hit. And uh, my app definitely is using a little uh, lag right now, so I would like to you know get to the end of this video here pretty shortly because I'm starting to sense my phone's just kind of getting to its limit. And uh, on this tour. When it starts lagging a little bit, there's certain holes that, you know, it's worse than others. And my phone right now is extremely hot. Um, I tried to do a factory reset on this phone. 
Now, my other phone that I play with on my main account is uh, Galaxy S7. Um, highly recommended for this uh, for this game. I have had very little problems with the Galaxies. Um, they don't play hot. They the timing seems to be very consistent. Um, this is an old Droid Turbo 2 that I'm playing on with this account. Um, and for the for the early on tours, you know, perfect ball I don't think is you know a deal breaker. And plus the the drawings don't seem to be as complex. So it seems like the holes that you know weren't as complex. Oh boy. Oh whew. Almost had that sucker. Now this is gonna be kind of a tricky hole for me to beat, but like I was saying about what what I was just saying is uh those those phones, those tours that don't seem to be quite as uh yeah, I'm gonna need it, buddy. <laughs> Trust me. So <laughs> Okay, so what I like to do here is I like to land the second. Jeez. Okay, so I like to land the second hop on the fairway. So, and for this, you know, it's probably going to be a 12 ring adjustment, to be honest with you, towards short end of the club. So, you're going to see me overplay this wind. And then I'm still going to do just a slight curl. And you see, it just everything seems to really be lagging right now. And let's hope... Yeah, that's not too terrible. I don't know if it beat this guy, though. Because he didn't roll down the hill that much. Whew. It's another close one. See, I'm just kind of scre screeching in there. Um, I was going to tell this guy... Yep, he's already gone. Just gonna tell him he got un unlucky because he was really close, but uh, well, it is what it is, I guess. You know, people come in, text, I can't pull up the. You see my messenger pop up all the time, and uh, you know, coming in there and uh, getting to the chat window sometimes is impossible when that happens, so. It is what it is. But anyway, I'm going to end this video now because my device is just getting extremely laggy. Like I said, I'm playing on this old Turbo 2, um, which used to be a really good phone. But it just seems to, uh, you know, two some years old. I just factory reset it on Thanksgiving and uh, really didn't seem to help it too much. Uh, the biggest thing is, you know probably upgrading this phone. I don't like playing on the same phone I uh, for two accounts. Uh, what I've been noticing is I'll try logging into the other one and it won't log in anymore um, unless I clear the data. And it's kind of annoying to just keep clearing the data. So I'm not going to probably play on the same device uh, for two accounts. I'm probably gonna keep it separate but if you could feel how hot this phone is, it's pretty crazy. Like, it's not even, it's, it's super hard once it starts to get this sluggish to actually win matches. So, um, I really recommend, you know, you finding something that, uh, you know, a lot of guys are using those apples, those uh, iPhones and stuff. But then if you have Android, um, I know for a fact, you know, the Galaxies are good. Uh, I have no problem on my mo on my main. Um, I can play on the charger. I can play like I, I I can't even usually play on the charger with this phone because it just seems to run hot when it's plugged in. So and uh, it get, it just gets crazy lag. Like you'll see the screen lag is just unbelievable. So I try to avoid it at all costs and. Uh, you see every once in a while, you know, I'll lose a match because of the lag. And you started seeing it. I don't know if you can tell how laggy it is, but that one tiebreaker when I tried to hit it left on purpose on the Anantol because I underplayed it. So I tried to add like an extra ring, ring two. One or two rings would have been fine because Sniper's so accurate. As long as you're in that tolerance. If you're in a one yard tolerance 
on Sniper, it's not that big a deal. So, but anyway, it's been running super hot ever since then. And I don't know if you can see, but it's really, you know, starting to glitch a lot of the drawings. So, um, I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, turn my phone off, recharge it back up, probably at you know, about 70% now. So, I'll just get it back up to 100 and, you know, I'll, I'll do some more Tour 11 for you guys. Uh, I, I didn't do too many holes there. So, what, six holes? And I went three and three. So, uh, it'd be nice to, you know, improve on that. I'd like to go, you know, two and four pretty consistently. Or four and two, I mean. But, uh, anyway, hopefully you guys find this video, uh, you know, helpful for your Tour 11. Especially if you... Uh, th there is some more playoff holes I want to talk about, and we just haven't got to them yet. So I'm definitely going to be adding some more, and uh, hopefully you guys, you know, have great success with uh, Tour 11. So good luck.